Hi everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, AEM Assets and Workfront Better Together. My name is Chelsea Shetler, and I will be the event moderator for today. Let's go ahead and get started with a little bit of housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded and a copy will be available for on-demand viewing upon conclusion of the event. A copy of the PowerPoint slides will also be sent out to registrants. For a better view, you can expand the video or slide windows on ON24 using the buttons at the top right-hand corner of both windows. We encourage you to ask questions throughout the webcast. You may do so using the chat box in the left-hand corner of the screen. We have a very packed agenda for today. Um, quickly going through it, we have R2Is, Michael Page, and Dryers Brand Ice Creams. Cheryl and Lorraine will discuss the challenges that ultimately led to identifying a dam and the results, quickly followed by some Q&A. Then we have ZJ Digital's Mayor Becker and Fresenius Medical Care's Derek Green to discuss inefficiencies with marketing campaigns that ultimately led them to identifying a project management application, again followed by some more Q&A. And then finally, we have Adobe's John Hopkins to provide uh, thought leadership as to why today's digital marketers need to leverage both DAM and project management tools that can speak to each other to achieve maximum results. Finally, it is my pleasure to introduce today's speakers. We have Michael Page, Chief Digital Officer at R2I. He brings more than 25 years of client partnership experience toward further optimizing R2I's technology resources so its clients can maximize the full potential of their marketing stack. We have Cheryl Narain, Digital Manager, Web and CX Information at Dryers Grant Ice Cream. She plays a highly visible and strategic role in this newly created position by improving the consumer experience and performance of the Dryers brand's websites, including new features, functionality, marketing technology integrations, and SEO enhancements. We have Mayor Becker, Principal Consultant at ZJ, ZJ Digital, leads clients consulting projects in marketing operations, develops smart tech roadmaps, and defines client requirements for the implementation of Adobe Workfront. Mayor came up through demand gen, marketing communications, and marketing operations, leading regional and global teams at Computer Associates, Tribune Company, United Airlines, HH Global, and Google Motorola Mobility. Uh, Derek Green, Director of Program Management at Fresenius Medical Care. He led the effort to implement Adobe Workfront at the world's leading provider of products and services for individuals with renal diseases, as well as leveraging Workfront Fusion to integrate essential systems the marketing teams use every day. Finally, we have John Hawkins, Director of Partner Solutions for the Workfront product at Adobe. He has been with Adobe since the acquisition of Workfront in November and uh, of 2020 and was with Workfront prior to the acquisition for nearly 10 years. He's an experienced product presenter, having worked in training, solution engineering, and partner solution consulting for all his time with Workfront. Now I will be passing it off to Michael Page and Cheryl Narain. Uh, thank you very much. <clears throat> uh, Dryer's Ice Cream is America's ice cream company. It was uh, founded in 1928 in Oakland, California. Uh, it has a portfolio of premier brands that we've all heard of. Um, you know, Drumstick being one of them, Skinny Cow, Hagen dazs of course, and Outshine, and of course, many, many more. Uh, Dryers, uh, about a year and a half ago, selected R2 Integrated to create a, a world-class aspirational experience, or hub, rather than having uh, you know, disparate sites. It was bringing it all together into a, a single um, you know, destination for ice cream enthusiasts, B2B partners, and really just kind of building a customer-centric B2C and B2B property. Uh, and the flagship site was icecream.com. Uh, joining us today uh, to kind of share that success story is uh, Cheryl Noreen, uh, Digital Manager of Web and CX Innovation, uh, which is going to be the back half of our conversation, is, is not just taking... Uh, you know, what we have here, but how do we innovate and, and iterate on that over over some time? Welcome, Cheryl. Thanks, Michael. Excited to be here and talk about AEM. Awesome. So, uh, you know, Dryers, interesting at that period of time, had parted ways from the parent brand Nestle, which obviously um, you know, is, a, is a fairly significant piece. And, I, and it, it was really couched as, you know, almost uh, kind of be almost to a startup mode where you had to kind of pushed out on your own 
had to really shed all the trappings of Nestle IT, which is massive and slow. Yeah. I would say lethargic working with them for over 12 years. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about, you know, you really, you know, how do you start from shedding all these inefficient processes, manual ops, under leveraged, you had an outdated technology across, you know, a couple of static websites, you had stuff in Drupal, a couple of things in, I think there was one in Joomla. It was like, everything was everywhere that was on disparate systems. Like, you know, you know, I mean, that's a massive, you know, change for an organization, especially starting so many, so many new things. Like, what was that like? Yeah, definitely. Um, we are still in the process of it. It's kind of like taking apart Frankenstein at this point and making it better. Um, so when we did migrate over to icecream.com, which is obviously this SEO goldmine, we did want to put together that Ooh. hub. Um, but considering our team was pretty small and we do leverage agencies like R2i, which has been wonderful, um, my job is primarily to make sure that each team's workflow is efficient. And AEM really helped us with that in terms of all of our digital assets um, and managing all of them, especially across the diverse that we have. So if we're trying to funnel in six on a website, how do we do that? Um, I think the most important piece that's been working for our team right now is just the back end system. We can go directly from the back end to a live site and the fact that we can do it for one brand and then stagger across stagger it across all brands makes our workflow so much more efficient. So that opens up our team's time to tackle other parts of the website um, that still need to be taken care of. Uh, so I mean, that, you know, reuse is, is one of the key things that we, when we built that hub, it really wasn't just about one central place. It was about, you know, to your point, content reuse, you know, how do we change one thing in one place and then distribute that to, to many different endpoints. And then centralizing that or fettering that in AEM was a big part of bringing in those disparate systems, uh, you know, you know, into uh, into doing that. But um, so, you know, integrating these divided texts into that hub, like, how is that from? I mean, obviously that's an idea. Um, you know, do you feel like you've, you know, you know, adopted that? I think wholly as a practice within the organization. Do you feel? Do you feel modern? <laughs> Definitely feel a little bit more modern where we can. Um, like I said, we're still in the process of becoming our own standalone company. So um, unfortunately, we haven't been able to utilize the entire Adobe suite yet. But my future hope now that I am in this role and I'm taking over um, all of our web processes that we can utilize analytics um, and the rest of the suite to really understand our target consumer, how our consumer shops, um, where the pain points are on the website, um, and then use that to continually improve the site. We just launched Drumstick last month, which is great. It's brand new. Um, it's hilarious. If you haven't checked it out, you should take a look. Um, but that is definitely the level of branding that we're headed towards. So stay tuned for all of the cool things that we're able to do with AEM. Yeah, no, it's exciting. And, and that's normal. I mean, you stand up, you know, you federate all these sites, you bring it into a one piece, and then you learn a little bit about how people interact through analytics, right? And then then that's the, the fun part is taking that data and start to play with what you've learned in Target. And I think that's the that's really where I think you're going to shine as, you know, not just in, as an innovation lead, but also within the organization is, is being able to use Target to quickly understand, you know, what people are looking for. Um, to actually then to start to, you know, take the, you know, you know, if you see affinity for a particular category, start to deliver them certain categories on icecream.com and, and really start to, you know, I think drive, um, you know, that content reuse, those, those elements that you have, uh, and then and be able to show them, you know, across the site, you know, for particular individuals, you know, you'll, you actually, at this point, you'll know over time, you know, what people are looking for and be able to really react with that, um, you know, going forward, which I think is is particularly exciting. Um, yeah. 
Absolutely. Just, Just to, to your point, you can see on the slide here all of the different inputs that we have and speaking to that customer experience. We just wanted a centralized hub where people can go and find recipes for, let's say you want to make something with the outshine bars, right? Or if you're looking for something that's gluten free, we have smart labels on there. We have product information um, and AEM makes it really easy to kind of plug and play all these different inputs that we have into the website. So such as Price Spider, if you're looking for a hug and doll shop. Um, if you want to leave a rating or review for your favorite drumstick, we have Bizarre Voice plugged into that too. So the, the minimized workflow has been really, really great for the experience. Yeah, so it's all about reuse. I mean, you just asset someone in recipes, right? I mean, all these different brands, you know, the asset structure has to kind of reflect, you know, how each of these are separately branded, but then in some cases of a recipe, they could be co-branded or they could be, you know, those elements will be reused, you know, you know, all around and then and then the, you know the power of renditions to automatically generate you know which is you know i mean just think of the you know you know just reuse of creative assets alone like just to kind Absolutely. of you know superpower those assets being spread across all these different properties contextually uh so it's 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 really i i think um at least from our to our perspective i think you know, it crystallizes one of the best uses of a federated system where you're centralizing all of those assets and all of that content, and then you're really just variating it depending on the context of what brand site that you're on. So for us, it's, you know, obviously it's the gold standard of why you would, why you would choose AAM, why you would choose Assets Insights, and then, you know, having a multi-branded organization such as yourself that is so forward thinking, you know, is really, you know, I think kind of the perfect marriage between you know, product and client and, and honestly solution team. So I'm um, super psyched to be part of it for sure. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Enjoy. Passing it back to the, the ZJ team. Oh, do we want to pause real quick to see if we have any questions, Michael, for oh, you absolutely. and uh, Cheryl? Yep. Sure. We'll give everyone a, a minute or so to let those come in if you have any. I want to hear a little bit more about drumstick real quick, Cheryl, while we're, while yeah. we're waiting. Yeah, just go definitely. To <laughs> is it, it drumstick.com? Yes, it is drumstick.com. Um, we have a brand new set of characters. The main one is Dr. Umstick and his consistent journey to get a drumstick. And so the tagline is another day, another drumstick. Um, so he's part action hero, part mad scientist, and part a couple of other things. He's a very unique character. Um, and he has a band of misfits that follow him around and try to score a drumstick every day. So it's pretty funny and really cute. That's amazing. I'm absolutely going to be checking this out as soon as this webinar is done. That sounds great. Yeah, there's a bunch of little videos um, at the bottom of the site too, so you can meet the team and watch their adventures. So that's great. Yeah team did a really good job putting that together. Um, it had just launched when I joined the team. So that was my first fun project to dive into um, as well as in AEM. And I was amazed. We did have, oh, I'm seeing one question pop in. Um, so uh, question is, uh, what's next? What's your advice for the next step in the asset management journey? So Cheryl or, or Michael? Yeah. I can do yeah, that. I can... Yeah, oh, cool. Okay. <laughs> um, now that we've gotten all of our assets streamlined and we do have a workflow in place that is working for our all of our separate teams that we have working on these projects, um, as I mentioned before, we're hoping to utilize the analytics to basically see where people are engaging, which um, media assets are performing um, the, the best and going in that direction to really dive deep into the consumer experience. And like I said, all of these different plug and play pieces, there's still a lot to work to do with the website um, and a couple more tools um, within the AEM suite that are, we are looking to leverage. Um, but again, to your question, next step is to just dive into analytics at this point. 
That's awesome. Yeah, the you know, continue integration, you know, with, you know, different things like Salesforce, but pulling in, you know, marketing content, feeding that data, um, those data sheets into the dam, you know, a big part of this is, is, you know, you know, the franchisee shop locations, right? So there's a whole B2B aspect of this that I think really, um, you know, is where assets is paid off even more so, right? So, you know, if you're talking about like, you know, what was mostly manual, now, you know, from a buyer from your standpoint on franchise shop locations, like, just think of how that's not supercharged almost automatically because each one of these shops is, you know, they're also consuming assets from this, this asset management tool. So it's not just, you know, sort of central federated on icecream.com, you know, on the individual brand teams, but then all of these franchisee shops also are requiring these images. So when I say B2C and B2B, it truly is the, yeah, I think that's really the, the area that we'll continue to fine tune and continue to push. Perfect. Um, and then we have one more. Um, how long did it take you to streamline the assets and set up the workflow in AEM? So a long time. time. <laughs> well, not super long. I would say about four to five months for sure. And we're still in process. Um, I just joined the team a little less than two months ago and our brand teams and our creative director, Tom, have done a wonderful and amazing job in partnership with R2Y to really streamline all of the assets that we currently had and continue to build on the library that we have. So it definitely took a little bit of time um, and it's it's a growing project for sure. Sometimes, with the, sometimes with, especially with assets, there's a difference between duration and actual effort. So things mm -hmm. sometimes take a lot longer it's not like we're working full time on that, but it just because of, you know, the way things are collected, just building rendition, it just takes time to get to a point where, you know, you've built up enough critical mass. Then I think that the project starts to become far more streamlined, almost automated in some cases, but, you know, just don't think of, you know, it's, that's not the full lift. It's just the duration to do it and do it well, it needs to be thoughtful. You need to be premeditated, you need to take time you know, there are those things that are sort of built into that duration as well. Yeah. And across all of our different brand portfolios, we have so many. So it's basically like having seven websites. So you also have to take the volume into mind. But once you do that initial lift, then you're set for, you know, the rest of your projects and you don't have to do it again. Perfect. All right. That's all the questions we have for right now. Um, if you have any more questions, this to the audience, um, please feel free to put them in the chat as as we move through the present the rest of the presentation. All right. Up next, Thank we're you. hearing from Mayor and Derek. Thank you, Chelsea, and uh, thank you to uh, Michael and to Cheryl for uh, giving us uh, the story of how Dreyer's uh, implemented AEM assets. Uh, our audience may not be as familiar with Fresenius as they are with Dreyer's and uh, with uh, the other ice cream brands. So um, I will introduce first our speaker, who is a client of ours. Uh, this is Derek Green. Derek is uh, Director of Program Management for Marketing and Customer Experience with Fresenius. Fresenius is the leading provider of comprehensive care for chronic kidney uh, disease in North America with about 70,000 employees, and they're headquartered uh, in Waltham. Let me welcome Derek. Hey, thanks, appreciate it. You know, Derek, you shared with me some of the challenges that uh, you faced. One of the aspects of your role is to manage the MarTech stack. And you, you shared some of these challenges that you faced back in uh, late 2018, early 2019, as you were looking uh, for solutions. I wonder if you could, uh, while our audience reads, uh, you know, some of these, um, uh, some of these challenges on the slide, if you could make uh, one or two of them come to life and kind of help us understand how the leadership team participated in helping you bring work management uh, into Fresenius. Yeah, sure, happy to do that. So, there are several different opportunities identified in, in looking at um, how to fill the intake and fulfillment 
uh, for our team. We have a fairly large uh, marketing uh, team. It's actually global um, at this time. And back in 2018, we actually identified some opportunities or pain points. Uh, one was to really get the team to collaborate on filling projects. Um, as we grow uh, and as um, we centralize our marketing operations, uh, we need to more often have an understanding, have processes in place um, to intake these requests and also to fulfill those requests. So some of the challenges that we're having because of volume and volume as it pertains to requests uh, back in 2018, we would see like 50 to 60 requests um, per day. So you can imagine the amount of emails um, that folks had to, to, to manage. So, so those requests were coming via email. Um, and then secondly, it was about how do these channels, uh, whether, the, whether it be Creative Studio, whether it be um, our email distribution channel or print channel, how do all of these, all of these um, channels work and collaborate together to fulfill that project need that comes in? Um, so, you know, again, we had to work with our leadership team. They were very open uh, to this because they were seeing some pain points on their end, particularly when it came to decision making and understanding what the programs are, what the types of requests are. So we we're really looking to drive um, communication, collaboration um, across the teams, but also decision making. As, as well as pertains to review and approvals, um, which were also occurring over email. Um, and because we, you know, of course, for our business, patients first, uh, we think about patients every day, but we also have to remain compliant. So we can't remain compliant uh, with an email, you know, saying this is approved. The FDA um, uh, doesn't like that at all. <laughs> so we certainly had... Um, compliance reasons as, as well. And I understood that uh, some of these issues were actually raised through internal uh, employee surveys. Is that correct? Yeah, so not all the issues, um, but um, one main issue. So let me just say that uh, my company, yes, again, patients first, you'll probably hear me say that over and over again because we take it very seriously. But um, the company also heavily invests in its employees. And throughout the year, we have employee engagement surveys to understand um, experiences of the employee, things, opportunities uh, for improvement. And one particular challenge that came up was, you know, no centralized um, technology or platforms for uh, centralizing assets you know, promotional, non-promotional materials and components therein, no centralized platform for managing projects, right? So a lot of the times um, what we found in the past, don't do this anymore, projects were managed in Excel, right? So mm -hmm. employees were reaching out and saying, oh, if, I can, if we can only have one centralized process, you know, centralized platforms to manage work, um, that would be extremely helpful um, for pro productivity as well as decision making. And decision making is a key part, especially because when it, you know when it comes to review and approval of um, our products and services. So we want to make sure that we're getting any changes out to market, you know, very quickly to our patients. Again, I will say that over and over again: patients first. Um, we just want to make sure that we are moving that content into market being compliant and doing that um, fairly efficiently as we do so. Did you also see a need uh, as you were designing your solution uh, to, to connect systems? In other words, as you looked at a work management application, weren't there other systems uh, that marketing used that need to be connected to it? Yeah, so when we we're identifying these opportunities and um, we were also looking at our MarTech stack and any solution that was going to handle intake and fulfillment of projects, uh, we wanted to ensure that that solution um, was able to integrate seamlessly um, into our different platforms um, that are used to move content from the request, either from a request or development 
to review and approval and, and, and back and forth. So we needed a system that was flexible, um, that could be used across all departments um, and, and various different, what we call content lifecycle management um, tools. Thank you. And this is uh, how it all turned out. You know, since we're, we now have, uh, you now have a couple of years of experience uh, as you uh, began your search late in 2018 and then, uh, you know, selected Workfront. Um, and it looks like your first deployment was, uh, it was actually, as I understand, as I remember, mid-2019. Uh, How is it that, you know, of all the teams that you have, uh, that you decided to, um, you know, to, to implement with marketing services and uh, the mar marketing and corporate communications? Yeah. It's always such a pleasure looking at this roadmap. Um, it's a testament to all the great work um, and our partnership, at, you know, working with ZJ Digital in particular. It's just amazing how far we've come. I just wanted to say that. So, you know, after evaluating and, you know, aligning on, yes, Workfront will be our uh, project management tool of, of record for Fresenius and medical, medical care in North America. Um, marketing services um, in particular was poised for that. And the reason being is because we had SOPs in place for processes only, but we didn't have the technology, right? We already had folks who were familiar with the services that we offer, um, either, you know, for call center support, creative studio, print support, research and analytics, um, as well as just data operations. Um, so we had that all in place. So that department was poised um, for a pilot, right? To say, okay, we understand that there's three pillars. There's people, process, and technology. We have the people. We kind of have the process. And what we wanted to do is implement Workfront to fill that tech technological gap. Um, and so that's why we started off with marketing services in particular. As it relates to Marcom and corporate communications, they too were poised. They had great SOPs, but didn't have technology. And so we decided to pilot um, the platform Workfront uh, with, the, with these two departments, well, just not to intake work necessarily, uh, but to manage the day-to-day -day projects um, as well. So it was very interesting because one was really leveraging uh, the intake forms that occur when you are um, filling out a request within Workfront. And the marketing corporate communications team were using forms, if you're familiar with Workfront, these forms within their day-to-day. -day. So they were able to use forms on tasks and be able to share information across their projects. Mm -hmm. So external, external comms, um, internal comms, as well as uh, user experience. So it was a pilot, a very successful pilot, um, and we saw some great efficiencies. What, what caused the stampede then in 2020 as additional departments uh, decided that they also needed uh, yeah. a work management application? So after, after action review, there's two things that occurred. Um, wow, um, you know, the success um, as far as bringing efficiencies and um, minimizing emails and reduction of uh, statuses across the team, like other teams wanted to do it too, was word of mouth. How can we utilize Workfront? But then there's this little, I put little thing, uh, called COVID that happened. Um, and the organization realized that we had to adapt fairly quickly. Um, again, patience first. Um, whenever we're creating materials for uh, products or even for promotional material, we want to make sure that it goes out to market quickly and make sure that it's compliant because it affects our patients. So we take this very seriously. And so Workfront was the platform. Do we have something? Yes, we do. And so we did see an exponential growth um, in 2020 of departments that wanted to utilize um, Workfront for intake and fulfillment of their projects day to day, um, as well as um, just for proofing, which is the review and approval capability of Workfront. And were you, it looks like you had you know, departments from all over the company, how did you find the flexibility to be within Workfront to accommodate them? Or did they all have to take kind of the same solution that marketing services took? 
Yeah, so uh, thanks to ZJ Digital helping us uh, build out a, um, an SOP, I want to call it a technical SOP, or architecture rather, um, we were able to accommodate certain workflows um, that could be quickly adapted uh, by the businesses. That doesn't mean that they don't have any customizations. Um, and those customizations, and we'll probably talk a little bit about this, but um, you know, looking at Workfront, Workfront has the um, also has a capability called Fusion, which is kind of a low code integration. And so, as you as I mentioned previously, we were also interested in you know ensuring that the system Workfront integrated across these different tools. So the, the customization I speak to are those um, different touch points of integration between those tools. Mm -hmm. So for example, just to bring that to life a little bit, uh, we use Viva Promo Mats for our uh, medical legal review. Um, so we were able to essentially integrate Workfront, which is our development platform as we did our development. So review and approvals happen, you know, in Workfront with our content owners. Um, and once that material is ready for medical legal review, um, instead of downloading that content from Workfront, re-uploading it into Viva Vault Promo Mats, um, we're able to seamlessly just move that content from development to a formal medical legal review. And, and it has worked wonders uh, for us. And it saves time as well. Sure. And uh, from the list that you uh, have given me, as our audience can see at the bottom of the slide, Fusion has been able to integrate Workfront with uh, a, a, quite a, a number of third-party applications, both Adobe and uh, non-Adobe. Um, do any of these stand out as uh, other than Viva Vault, which does your um, uh, the legal compliance reviews? Does anything yeah. kind of stand sure. out as uh, a really productive integration? <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, earlier we talked about AEM, um, and we utilize AEM for our distribution. Uh, so when assets are approved, um, we can seamlessly move them from Viva to Workfront or Workfront to AEM fairly seamlessly uh, for distribution. So that was key. Again, just understanding, consolidating, and really automating uh, the process is it was extremely important. So AEM is a big player uh, in our particular workflow. I would have to also uh, speak to uh, Cvent. Um, you may not be familiar with Cvent. Uh, Cvent is a events management platform, and so our events team, which manages events at, at a global level, receives requests. Um, globally to, to handle these or fulfill those requests. Um, and Workfront, uh, by the use of Fusion, um, that integration is able to convert that request into a project, um, and the project is, be, is able to be fulfilled um, uh, by the team. But more, more importantly, it's not only able to take that request from Cvent and convert it to a project, we're also able to push and pull information from Cvent. So expense information, uh, budget information, cost center information, registration information. Um, and the third piece um, about Fusion as it relates to Cvent is registration emails. So we are able to trigger registration emails via Workfront to Cvent to say, okay, our registration email has been completed, and we are now able to just, when we complete the task, Workfront will tell Cvent to push those registration emails to the registrants. So it's a quality, it's a it's a highly complex um, and, and efficient. Uh, workflow. So, you know, thank you again, um, ZJ Digital, for all the awesome work um, that has been done. So we, I mean, the team has really seen some, some, some great things coming out of that integration. You are most kind and thank you. I know we're running uh, toward the end of our um, allotted time. And so kind of as a summary, uh, Derek, uh, you've, uh, you've helped us understand what the challenges were and how you then rolled 
out over a period of time. I'm sure you're, you're continuing to, to add more, uh, more teams to, uh, to work front, but if you could just kind of sum up, if you will, the experience you've had, and uh, we can then open it up for questions. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> um, it's not just myself, it's, my, it's the teams. Um, one, it's the status meetings. Um, you know, prior to Workfront um, and some of these integrations, we had, so we still have status meetings, but we have status meetings are, that are productive, right? Not just to engage on, let's talk about that email. Let's, you know, I didn't understand your request. Um, so we've seen a, a, a high reduction in status meetings as it pertains to just pure follow-ups. Mm -hmm. Everything is done in Workfront. Um, as well. And so that is really reduced email as well. And that falls into, you know, content review and approvals um, as well. So, you know, it's just been great. Um, I have to say, I mean, you know, it was the solution work front and working with ZJ Digital to implement some of these customizations has really um, proved the way we work, the way we collaborate, communicate, uh, communicate um, and coordinate across the different channels. Thank you, Derek. I appreciate your sharing uh, your experience. Uh, Chelsea, sure. I know we've run pretty um, pretty much over our time. If you'd like to share any of the questions that have come in, uh, Derek and I can respond to them afterwards, uh, maybe after the webinar directly uh, to those who posted it so that we can get on to John's presentation. Yep, absolutely. Um, I think we had just one question come in, but we can follow up with it afterwards. Um, John, it's awesome. All yours. Cool. Thank you. And and I, I kind of want to just say I agree and end the webinar. Um, you guys have done a, a great job, and, and I love the use case that you've, you've both presented uh, to the audience here. Um, but I want to show kind of what Workfront looks like in collaboration with a, a number of the Adobe products uh, using Fusion, using other built-in integrations that we have. So I'm going to jump to a, a, a uh, what we kind of call our, 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 our system of record, right? So if you take a look at um, work, um, work is kind of standardized around, you know, five or six different key, uh, key buckets of, of, uh, um, of stages that, that, that the work goes through, right? You've got your strategy uh, and intake. Your strategy meaning here's what we're going to do it as an organization. Sometimes it's intake where you're gathering information from other people. Maybe it's clients. Maybe it's um, inside sources um, that have ad hoc work that needs to be done. And you need to put that into the overall strategy of the, or of the organization. And then you've got your ability to plan and, and the necessity to plan and budget, right? What kind of work can we get done? How much of this strategy can we do based on the, the, the financial and, and human resources that we have? Once you get that all, all you know, figured out, um, you've got to align and actually create the work or, or, or execute on the, uh, on the plan and the budget. Um, there were several times where, uh, uh, Derek and Mayor and, and Michael and Cheryl both talked about, um, you know, review and approval of work, right? Getting, getting the, the, the approval to actually publish the work out. Um, that's a big stage in the work process that, that needs to be really looked at um, and streamlined. Um, and, and Workfront is able to help do that. Um, and then there's the storage and, and sharing of the assets or the work that's been created, right? Uh, in a in a dam, uh, as we heard with uh, with with dryers, um, and and then being able to um, share that those those assets that have been created out to either an internal audience or an external audience, and deliver that information at scale, right? Launch it through the right channels, get it to the right audience to increase sales or awareness uh, of, of uh, you know, the campaign or the work that's been done. And then of course, measurement and optimization. So this is what it, what it will look like um, as we get into 
you know, that, that methodology. Okay. Um, and so what I want to do is kind of walk through a day in the life of a team, right. And, and how they work together They're using work front, using, um, you know, the other Adobe, uh, uh, products to, to really align and, and get on board with, you know, the work that's being done and streamline that, that, uh, publishing, publishing and, and measurement of, of everything that's happening within the team. So um, we'll start with a line. Typically what happens, we've seen this uh, a number of times through, you know, throughout our clients is that the, the executive will send an email saying, hey, we want to make a big push this year to increase our market visibility. And our goal then is to increase coffee subscriptions or whatever the product is. We want to increase that revenue by 20%. Everybody will celebrate that. It'll be great uh, until maybe February, and then they'll move on to you know what's really pressing for the organization, right? So instead of losing sight of that top level goal, Workfront allows the organization the entire organization to keep track of what that goal looks like, right? Um, in the goals section of Workfront, we can outline the, the strategic pillars of the organization. In, in doing so, we can also add the next layer down, right? What are the specific objectives that we're going to use to reach that top level goal? And in this case, you know, transform the customer experience, we're really needing to add another sub-level goal to increase that, that coffee subscription, right? So we just add a goal, um, increase the subscription revenue by, by 20%, and there it is, right? And so now we can start to add, um, add projects, add campaigns, add work to that, that top-level goal by focusing on the coffee subscription sub goal. Okay. So we start to plan out what's going to, what it's going to take to, to achieve that, uh, that mark, that 20% uh, increase in revenue. Well, it needs work, right? So we're going to add a new campaign to that particular goal. Uh, as we create the campaign, we can add a description, we can align it to that particular goal. And we start to add projects to that campaign. These projects, uh, you can make them up a, a, a along the way, or, or you can add templatized workflows that give you the ability to, um, you know, kick off the work right away, streamline what's happening, and get people on board. In this case, we'll focus on this Muse creative project for a few minutes. And we'll add in tasks here, right? Uh, we need to create uh, imagery. We need to create a quiz uh, for our audience. Um, we need to, you know, create a bunch of, in, you know, uh, a bunch of assets that allow us to reach the right audience. Um, as we look at the hero images task here, we've got a description of what this task might be, when it's supposed to be due. Um, we don't have any assignments yet, and that's okay because we want to make sure that we're giving it to the person who can actually fulfill that, that work. But we want to add some, uh, some pre-approved images to that particular task. Um, and we're going to do that using um, uh, assets that have been uh, in the DAM, right? In this case, it's uh, AEM assets. So we add files from AEM assets, bring in you know, whichever files we want to bring in, and those will be available to the person that's assigned to this particular task. So now it becomes our responsibility to uh, make sure that we have the right people to uh, fulfill that task. So we go to onboarding, right? In Workfront's resource management capabilities, we have the ability to visually understand who's available and who has the right, um, who has the right, uh, um, uh, uh, skill set, excuse me, um, uh, so that we can actually then go and do the work, okay? So 
Uh, in this case, it doesn't look like, I'm going to go back real quick, it doesn't look like there's anybody that's actually available to do the work as indicated by all the red uh, in, in the bottom half of the screen there. So what we can do is actually make a request and bring on an outside resource without ever leaving Workfront, right? So we're going to come in and make a request to bring in uh, a, a, a freelancer, okay? So we do an onboarding request. We need to contract with a designer for the, the creative aspect of this particular uh, campaign. So we've, we've reached out to Emily before, okay? And uh, so now uh, with Emily, uh, using Workfront Fusion, as we process that request, Fusion's gonna send an email to Emily immediately. Right, that has the contract ready for her to sign using Adobe Sign. So as she looks at this contract, she can see terms and conditions. She can see um, uh, uh, example uh, assets that are available to her. And she can sign this contract. And as soon as she signs that contract, Fusion will then go to work and give her all of the Creative Cloud apps that, that Frescopa, this coffee company, um, has available to her, okay? So then when she opens up um, this Muse uh, or, or the, the, you know, the, the, the Creative Cloud apps, all of these assignments are going to be given to her and Fusion's going to automatically make those assignments to her as soon as she signs that contract. Now, she'll go in and create that work but she doesn't do it in Workfront. She's gonna do it in, in Photoshop or other creative cloud apps like InDesign or Illustrator or even XD, but she'll have all of the information that she needs right here in Photoshop using the Workfront plugin. So she signs into Frescopa's domain, gets all of the tasks that she's been allocated and starts to work on this homepage hero promotion. It gives her the description of that particular task. She can see the documents that have been uploaded to that task as well. And she can start to use Asset Link to bring in templatized uh, assets from the dam. Okay, so she brings in this banner and starts to work on this using the assets that have been uploaded to this particular task, right? So she'll come in and she'll start to add um, uh, you know, the background that was uploaded, she'll add the, the, uh, the logo, okay? And as soon as she's ready, she'll go back to that task um, and get the approval process kicked off by creating a, or using a templatized workflow for that creative review. She doesn't actually have to then go upload this document into Workfront the link there will actually automatically upload, excuse me, upload that document to um, uh, back into that, uh, that, that task that she's been assigned. And now she'll go uh, on to the next task while the approval is being made um, on the task that she previously performed. From here, she'll uh, jump into the approval, or the team will jump into the approval process and what's nice about this is this actually isn't in Photoshop, even though it looks like it is. It's in uh, Workfront's proofing system. Um, and, and there's comments that are being made in connection with one another on this particular asset. Okay, so um, Karen's come in, and, or sorry, Corey's come in and said, I really like the new wording. Karen agrees with that. The next person, Joan, can come in and say, hey, I'm fine with the new changes as well. They'll then make an approval dis decision on this asset. And as soon as it's approved, it'll then be sent over to AEM Assets as a brand new asset for this campaign that they can then kick off and start using. Before they do that though, Emily's gonna go in and, and mark all of her tasks as complete. Other projects are being updated as well, so they'll continue to, to, to move along. And now they need to start uh, measuring this and publishing it out. Okay. So once it's published out, they can then go and measure uh, the, the work here that's, been, that's being used, right? They'll, they'll, they'll build a site around this particular asset. 
um, and um, uh, they'll start to measure this 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 uh, the effectiveness of this asset. So using um, analytics, uh, Adobe Analytics, they'll come in and they'll take a look at the reports. They can see revenue trends week over week or rolling revenue trends. They can start to see you know uh, asset performance uh, that you know how much. Uh, 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 revenue at each asset is generating and what happens is this will then roll back into workfront goals and update this that specific goal that they created okay so increase coffee subscription revenue by 20 percent which then will prompt the executive to come back and say unreal team we completely crushed this goal we actually overshot our target um, and we did it ahead of time. So congratulations. Thanks for all the work that you did. Take the weekend off, right? Um, what happens is all of this work is being done in Adobe products, right? From Creative Cloud to Asset Link, using sites uh, to create you know, the, the, the website, using AEM assets as kind of that, that distribution uh, option uh, for sites. Using Adobe Sign to bring in outside resources or bring in new resources and onboard them uh, uh, for a project or for you know a, a campaign. Um, using analytics as well to measure what's been happening, but then using Workfront and Workfront Fusion all along that whole entire work lifecycle to make sure that everybody is connected, on board, uh, visually seeing what's happening and aware of what's coming down the pipeline for, for them so that they can be ready uh, to move forward with the work that they need to do. All of this happens in, in the Adobe systems, right? Uh, using connectivity uh, between systems, Fusion where there isn't a built out integration um, uh, of uh, you know, uh, already existing, um, but really making sure that everybody has insight into what they're supposed to be doing and when. Okay, so Chelsea, with that, I'm going to uh, end the presentation. We've got about 10 minutes left for Q&A um, uh, in, in, you know, discussion. Thank you so much, John. Really appreciated that overview. It was really cool to see all the integrations and uh, seeing uh, Photoshop make a brief appearance as well. For sure, um, for sure. I actually... Uh, I actually do have a couple of questions I saw come through. Um, if all of our speakers want to get back on, on video, I do have a couple um, uh, for the whole team here. Let's see. Uh, Mayor and, and Derek, uh, I had a question come in for you during your presentation portion. Um, did you include Fusion from the initial step or was it determined that additional, uh, additional functionality was needed after the initial Workfront implementation? Yeah, sure, happy to. Um, so initially, when we uh, started uh, with Workfront, we knew right away that we wanted to implement um, Viva, and we also knew that we wanted to implement um, AEM. Those are the two, probably two uh, priority requirements that we had. Um, so I would say, yes, <laughs> we had some foresight um, into that. And then as we become, as we adopted the system, as folks started to use the system, we looked at our Marcom tech stack, and I talked about Cvent, and so we started to, to, to uh, work to integrate that particular platform. Um, the other platforms, I believe you probably saw Marketo on there as well. Um, we were in the process of integrating IBM Watson um, to automate our distribution of emails. We've since paused that, because now we're adopting Marketo. So starting probably first quarter of next year, we're gonna start up that integration with Marketo. So it really is, um, you know, looking at our processes, looking at where can we improve efficiencies. Um, so to again, to move content, either to move content to market quickly or to just to get content out um, as quickly as possible, like an email, right? Particularly for internal communications. Okay, perfect. Um, I also actually had another question for you, Derek, as well. Uh, yeah, sure. Do you have a person, uh, let's see, or do you have a person slash team dedicated to supporting Workfront? <laughs> we are a very small and nimble team. 
Um, so I have a team of three. Um, I would say out of, out of that team of three, two of them um, are really hands-on or what we call group administrators. Uh, so one is a group administrator and the other is a librarian. And our librarian is highly important as it becomes, you know, as it pertains to content lifecycle management because they need an understanding of what the content, how the content is moving through and how to maintain things like uh, metadata uh, within the system, whether it be within AM or within our Viva Vault problematics. But we have a small and nimble team, which is about to grow because we are growing uh, globally uh, with Workfront. So looking forward to uh, the future support. Awesome, awesome, thank you. Um, and also just real quick as a reminder, um, we will be sending out this recording and, and PowerPoint presentation um, at the end of this webcast. So you'll see that come in later today from me. All right, um, up next, and this is for anyone who can answer this. Um, and if we don't have the answer for this, I'm sure we can get it. Um, that so they were noticing that we were using on 24 for this webinar. Um, does on 24 integrate with AEM and Workfront? I, I can take that, uh, Chelsea. Uh, we don't have a built in integration per se, but using Workfront Fusion um, and, and the uh, API from on 24, we can we can create a connection. Um, to uh, on 24 with AEM and Workfront. The question that I have is kind of, you know, re in return, think about the use case there. What's what would be the reason for uh, integrating with on 24? Uh, is it to publish, you know, uh, uh, like uh, you know the the slides or whatever uh, from AEM, um, or would it be some other reason? So I think that's the that's the big question in return. What's the what's the purpose of of uh, the integration, and I think that's the question with every system, right? Is what's the purpose of the integration, and and what do you, what information do you need to slide back and forth? That's awesome. Perfect. Um, I think we have one more. Um, what is the best way to integrate Workfront and EEM? I can help take that as well. Uh, and, and Mayor, if you want to add anything, or, or Michael, if you want to add anything. Sure. Um, I think that uh, while we, we do have a built-in integration, uh, it is a connector, um, and you would set it up between, um, uh, you know, obviously your instance of Workfront and, and your instance of AEM assets. Um, but it is, it is a built-out connector um, that's available uh, from from your sales rep, I guess, is, is what I would say. So, yeah. You're right. And there, there's good documentation, uh, John, on that. So part of the work is done on the AEM asset side, uh, would be done, let's say, by R2I if they were your uh, partner. And there's work on the work front side. This is configuration. You have to check some boxes, make sure that uh, the uh, the systems are linked behind the scenes. Uh, ZJ Digital, of course, would do it on the workfront side if we were your partner. So it, it does require a little bit of work on each side, but then it's a connection that uh, shows up with uh, literally on the screen. You don't have to uh, go outside of workfront or go outside of AEM assets uh, to talk to the uh, other system. Perfect. Uh, John, I had a new question actually come in for you, um, and this kind of speaks a little bit more to, our, to Adobe's product stack, um, but uh, all the tools that you reviewed, um, are they available um, only with separate contracts and licensing per user, or are, they, um, or are there any integrated licensing packages available? Uh, what I would say is I think our, our sales team would be really creative at helping uh, creating an integrated <laughs> yes. uh, licensing package um, so that so that you could use all these systems together. Um, but yeah, I I unfortunately am not, not authorized to answer you know uh, packaging questions. But your your sales rep or your, your consulting team to help build a package for you. Perfect. All right, I think that just about answers everything we have in the chat. I wanted to take uh, I wanted to take a moment to thank our speakers uh, for making the time out of your busy, busy days. And it's been um, really crazy this month. 
um, you know, especially leading up to, to the holiday week in a couple of weeks here. I um, wanted to thank you for taking that time to hop on this webinar and, and, and walk us all through um, your technology integrations and the successes that you've had with, with our tools. Um, it was really great to hear from all of you. Uh, for the audience, um, we again, we will be sending out that recap email and, you know, giving in, if you have any more questions for the speakers, we would be happy to put you in touch with them um, or any other members of the Adobe team. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great rest of your Thursday, and I hope you have a happy rest of your week. Thanks. Thank you.